So again, rebound open, compression close, and compression open, rebound close really only tell you half of the picture. There are two of the four quadrants on each one of those charts, so we really don't know what's going on with the other half of the shot uh, of the of the quadrant or a, of the cycle of the dyno plot. And um, I'm you know I can't verify this, but obviously it's a great way if you want to hide what's going on or if something strange is going on in the shock, you would show this plot to a customer so that they don't see the things that you're trying to hide. So. Um, it's not really a great plot. I mean, it tells you some of the basics about the shock and a really, really good shock. It doesn't matter because the two graphs should line up together, but we'll show some examples of how that rarely happens in the real world. So again, CVP plot. So this one actually does show all four quadrants. It's a good plot. Um, the only problem with it is you have to run it at one speed. So when you run a CVP plot, now... I mean, you can run it at multiple speeds, but typically you're going to run it at one speed and you're going to type it into the shock dyno and you're going to say, I want to see the CVP plot for 15 inches per second. Now, of course, to get to 15 inches per second, we have to accelerate the shock from zero up to 15 inches per second, and then it turns around and does the same thing in reverse, so either in compression or rebound, and then it goes from zero to 15 inches per second. Now what that means is uh, we're always doing this, in our case, on a two inch stroke. Some shock dynos are set up for a one inch stroke. So that means in order to get in one inch to get to 15 inches per second, as the shock turns around, it's literally spending thousands of a second at those lower speeds. So let's just say from zero to one inch per second, you could be spending thousands of a second collecting data. So is that realistic? Well, when the shock accelerates to 10 or 15 inches per, per second, yes, that makes sense. But it doesn't give us that detailed information when the shock is only accelerating to, let's say, 2 inches per second. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we look at the, at the plots. Now, one of the nice things about a CVP plot is you can uh, quickly test you know, different settings for a knob. So I can go in and I can click off two clicks and run the shock dyno plot and click it again. And I get a lot of data. Uh, and it's very good data and it's a good baseline. Now let's look at the PVP plot. So uh, I've always heard that uh, road race guys like CVP plots and and circle track guys like PVP plots um, but I think in reality everybody likes a PVP plot that actually gives you CVP data. So you really get the best of both worlds when you run a PVP plot and what it is actually doing is it will accelerate to whatever speed you tell it to accelerate to. So let's say we want to go up to 10 inches per second, and we can say take a measurement every 1 inch per second. So the dyno accelerates to 1 inch per second, takes a reading. Then it accelerates to 2 inches per second, and takes a reading, and accelerates to 3. So from that, it draws a graph. Now, of course, just like we said earlier with the um, rebound, uh, the, the you know, the plots that give us... Um, half the quadrants, um, that's really just giving us an average at each one of those speeds. So yes, it's good. It looks pretty. It gives us a, a good comparison when we're looking at different shocks. Is that information perfect? No, because we want to see all four quadrants, and an average doesn't tell us that. But the nice thing about a PVP plot is it actually collects all the CVP data as it's doing that acceleration run. So now let's say we want to talk about um, two inches per second on a shock, we can go look at the CVP data from that two inch per second run. Like I said, it accelerates two inches per second, takes one reading, but it also records all the data in between. So then we actually get a better, we get better information about what happens when that shock accelerates to two inches per second. And I use that, I keep using that term two inches per second because that's what happens when you uh, hit the brakes, or um, when you accelerate, or you know, commonly it's called driver input. So whether it's turning into a slalom on an autocross or turning in to a high-speed turn, the reaction of the driver generates about two inches per second in most cases uh, for most applications. So when we want to look at some of the other sl slow-speed uh, things that are going on inside the shock, then 
this PVP plot actually gives us that data, and we can see things like seal drag, and you know, are the shims opening correctly, and and all of those things at that slower speed. So this is really when you're asking for a plot, the PVP plot is the best one. Uh, you can actually download the Rorig software if they're using a Rorig Dino and open the Shock Dino plot and get all the CVP data as well. So. Uh, this is what we always use, um, even professional teams that we work with, this is what they ask for because they know that they can get all of that information.